back to Hoffman Reproductions. Had a party of about a dozen Shawnees on my trail there. I think I lost them over that hill, so we're safe to proceed. Good to be back with everybody here today. And on our episode for this time around, we're going to be talking about, no, not snap sacks, but what's inside the snap sack. Uh, some of the clothing that I have on we're going to talk about today. And more specifically, we're going to be talking about lower leg wear, leggings or gaiters as they called them in the 18th century. Both were used during the time period. And during the 18th century, most civilians and military individuals either wore knee breeches, which I have on here today, front fall knee breeches, or overalls which extended all the way down to the ground. Now, if you went out into the woods, especially if you were on a, uh, you know, you were involved with a ranger unit or even military unit, but Native Americans as well, it was oftentimes practical to have something else on your lower legs to protect them not only during the cold winter months or fall, extra warmth, insulation, but also to protect yourself from various thorns and brush that you find throughout the woods in North America. Now the pair that I have on here are what are called uh, side seam leggings and you can see there's a seam running up the side with just a little bit of salvage egg sticking out there. Very common with uh, French, English, civilians, Native Americans all up and down the eastern uh, coast there wore leggings similar to this. Um, I used to have a pair made out of leather and I've re since retired those, but leather was a very common choice. Um, when weighing the pros with the cons about what to make your leggings out of, I find there's no perfect choice. Uh, some materials are good for some reasons, bad for another, and leather is just like that. Uh, leather is the king as far as protecting your legs. It's just like wearing a pair of chaps, like a cowboy would wear. When you're going through brush and briars, if you have a pair of leather leggings on, they're going to protect your legs the best. However, there are drawbacks with that. Uh, if they become wet, they're kind of cold and clammy, they take a very long time to dry, and depending on what type of leather you use, in warm weather they can be a bit uncomfortable because they don't breathe quite as well as other materials. So something to bear in mind if you're considering leather, again, good for some reasons, not so much for another. Um, also, what I have on here, this particular pair are made out of wool. Wool was a common choice in the 18th century, used a lot for leggings. Um, again, it has its drawbacks as well. I like to wear wool leggings starting in the fall, and I'll wear them if I'm out and about doing this type of thing, clear through the winter on up until early spring, and they are the best at keeping your legs warm. They don't provide as much protection to your legs as do the leather, but they're lightweight. They'll keep you warm even when wet. They're easy to dry, and I don't tend to go through a lot of brush and brambles when out in the woods or on a reenactment field. So for me, during cold winter months, uh, wool is a good choice, and it was used quite a lot. Uh, the most common colors that were used during the 18th century were red, uh, dark blue, what we would call navy blue today, and also green. Now as far as the colors go, I have on dark blue or navy blue. Uh, that would have been made out of indigo dye, common in the 18th century to produce the various shades of blue. Uh, the reds that were very popular as well, they're not uh, the, the color that you would see a lot today. The real, real bright red that color was much more expensive to produce in the 18th century. It was a, an insect byproduct called cochineal. A lot of officers' uniform coats were made out of this, and that would yield the very bright colors. But it was very expensive, so it wasn't used nearly as often. This coat that I have on here, um, it's more of an orangish red. This is called matter root red. And a lot of the lower end reds were produced. This is also it's a plant extract that was imported to dye with. This is the very first uh, color that were ever used to produce red coats uniforms. In the 1600s, during the English Civil War, the very first color that 
was used by the uh, troops. The red color was produced by Matter Root because it was cheap. So it's kind of an orangish red, as I said, and this color is much more appropriate for uh, you know civilians, privates, lower ranking soldiers in the army. You probably would have seen this color traded a lot to Native Americans. It'll produce a good color, but it's not that real, real bright, vivid, deep red color that is common nowadays. Not quite as common in the 18th century, again, for the expense. Um, another color that was very popular before we move on with the uh, wool leggings would have been a green color. That was produced, there were various things that you could produce shades of green out of. It was more of an emerald color. Uh, you see a lot of like what's called hunter green or sage green nowadays. It was a lighter, more of an emerald color back then. And just on a quick note, when it comes to fabric dyeing, during the 18th century, we tend to think, well, they had grays and browns and maybe some reds, and that's about it. They actually had the technology and the uh, dye stuff products to produce any color of the rainbow. Some dyes were much more expensive and harder to get or import. Others were not, so you might see more of one type of color in a certain area. But they had the capability to produce any color of the rainbow. So just, again, you have to do your research, as we always say, to uh, closely repli replicate whatever you're going for. But you shouldn't uh, be limited to certain things to just say, well, they only had uh, browns and grays. That's not true. They had a lot of different colors. Some were used more than others, but they had the capability to produce lots of shades of red. Um, as far as the length of the leggings, I'm dressed as someone would be dressed from around the 1750s, 1760s right now. And the length of the leggings, a lot of accounts say about a hand's width above the knee. As time went on in the 18th century, especially during the Indian Wars, as they were called, when men started wearing breech clouts a lot more, the leggings tended to get higher, but in the 1750s and 60s, that's about as high as they would get. And even with Native Americans, that's about as high as they went. Sometimes the seam was put down the front of the leg, going across the knee. That was also done as well as the side seam pattern. But very common, and again, uh, wool and leather and even linen could be used. And while we're on the subject of linen, I'm going to go ahead and pull out the last set that I have here. As I said, I don't have a pair made out of leather anymore. I retired the pair I had a long time ago. But, I do have the military pattern, which is typically called gaiters. These are cut off of, and we'll just show you one here for the sake of ease. These are cut off of a 1750 military pattern legging, or what they called gaiters back then. And the main difference with them, as you can see, they're made out of, these would have typically been made out of a heavy linen. Now these are made out of canvas because it's what I had on hand at the time that I made them, but typically made of a heavy linen. Um, the most common colors that were used by military units in the 1750s and even onward were white, brown, and black. White was generally reserved for dress parade or, you know, inspection, whatever, fancy dress up time, and the blacks and the browns were the everyday kind. But the same thing applies here. It was just an extra layer that would go on your leg to help protect it from dirt, brambles, brush, and give you just a little more security on your lower legs. Um, for the summertime, and summertime events on up till early fall, I actually prefer to wear these. Again, on a reenactment field, you're really not doing that much ranging out in the brush and the brambles, so the lighter weight is really nice in the summertime. These stay much cooler than a, a wool or a leather pair. Relatively easy to construct. They take a while. Military um, leggings or gaiters typically have this row of buttons. Uh, made out of horn generally. These are made out of copper. Again, that's what I had on hand. So it's a little more involved than making just a simple pair like this. But again, I prefer these. You can get away with this, again, any kind of a military impression or a civilian impression as well. But I really like these in the summertime. Again, they, they're a lot cooler to wear and they do a decent job. It's about like wearing a pair of jeans in the woods. They'll give you some protection, not quite as much as leather, but they do a decent job. 
and uh, comfortable in the uh, hot weather as well. So that's going to kind of wrap up our talk on leather, wool, and uh, linen, or in that case canvas, leggings and gaiters. We hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for tuning in. Again, if you're new to our channel, I'd like to invite you to subscribe. And uh, we'll look forward to doing some more videos on down the road. So thanks so much for tuning in. And I think I might hear those natives returning. So I'm going to go ahead and prepare my soul and my gun. And we'll see you all next time. Thank you.